Good evening and welcome to St. Henry High School, where tonight WSN opens up MAC Volleyball action with two of the teams expected to be near the top of this conference, if not at the top. And that is the Coldwater Cavaliers and Nikki Etzler's team. They are here with a 4-2 and two record, and they're matched up with the St. Henry Redskins. And they are coached by Trisha Rosenbeck, and they are 3-1 uh, and one on the season. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play-by-play. Alongside our color commentary, Mr. John Dornick. John, welcome. Haven't had a chance to do a game with you yet this fall. And look forward to that. But we got an interesting Mac night, an opening Mac night. Oh, Mark, Mac's play is always outstanding. So you look out at these girls and you just wonder what they're feeding them in the Mac because these girls are big, they're athletic, and so it's fun for everybody to watch. Our officials this evening on the stand tonight will be Paul Offenbacher. Our R1 or R2 on the floor is Matt Steinbarger. And interestingly enough, John, with course, St. Henry has one loss on the season. Coldwater has two, and they all came at the Coldwater Invitational. <laughs> Coldwater lost the opening two matches in that invite to St. Mary's and to Ottawa Glandor before defeating uh, New Knoxville. And then uh, the, uh, my, the Fort St. Henry Redskins, they had wins over uh, Miami East and Fort Laramie before losing to Versailles, the eventual champion, in an absolutely wonderful match you saw on WSN. That was 25-18, 22-25, and 28-26 in favor of Versailles in the final set. Mark, it's always good to see these well-coached teams. They come out fundamentally sound. Everybody uh, knows what their job is, and uh, so it's just a, a great, great venue for our fans to watch. On the right-hand side of your screen in the black uniforms with the, the orange trim are the Coldwater Cavaliers. The Sandra Redskins are on the uh, left side, and they got a little lineup mix-up. Looks like, John? Looks like they've just got a backup one. Everybody gets moved around one to make sure they're in the proper place to get this started. So Henry, white uniforms, they are in the uh, dark with dark pants and uh, their libero will wear dark gray. She wears uh, number three, does the libero and that's uh, Rhea Busher. For the uh, Coldwater Cavaliers, their libero wears orange and that is Rachel Schroyer. For service, we'll go to Chloe Gells. Looks like the setters are opposite now. Mark, uh, St. Henry setters in the uh, middle back. Coldwaters is in the right front. Tip for a point. That point goes to General Igers. Okay, everybody's back on their heels to start off with, and uh, they just a little tip over the net. Mia Kanapke will serve. Mia has eight aces on the season to lead Coldwater. That ball gets put away out of the power corner by Lizzie Snyder. That was a nice shot cross court. She lined up, stayed behind the ball, put it down on the floor in front of the right back player. Here is that libero, Rhea Busher, to serve. She's a sophomore. Three aces for her on the season. Tip, and it's tipped wide on the far side of the court. Point goes to St. Henry. It's always a good thing to start off right with back, push that ball to the right corner back there, but she's just a little wide on that shot. Set. Tipped again, nice play in the back row that time, popped up in the air by Whirling. And then hit out of the middle for a point. That goes to Lizzie Snyder. Little out of system, the block, and then the first contact, and then they took it right on over. So that's well coached volleyball. Push her again. Float serve. That comes up a little short. Back to serve. General Ligers. Senior. And what we got? Something on the floor. Got to be a little kid Skittles. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis Wendell, the AD, performing one of the many jobs that ADs do. Oh. All right. Once those Skittles hit the floor, they go everywhere. <laughs> they go everywhere, don't they? It's a 5'9 senior to serve. Whirling sets. A kill comes out of the middle by Maya Antrop. These well-coached teams, Mark, they take the ball overhand as much as they can and gives them a little more control of the ball. Lizzie Snyder takes a seat. She gets replaced by 
I'm looking for a number eight on my roster, John. It looks like Brianna Mangan. Thank you. Nikki Epsler. After that, Spencer Epsler. Nikki's out of eligibility. 5 2. I asked Nikki this, when I talked to her before the match if uh, they wanted to put a wig on their son and have him play with all the sickness they have. They have had some injury issues. Got a, several players missing, at least three out of their varsity lineup. And what do we have? Double contact. 6 2 in favor of the Redskins. That kill will be put away by Madison Wendell. That back right corner, open again. Madison Wendell, 5'11", junior. Back to serve this one. Looks like Coldwater's running a 6'2 tonight with uh, Mia Kanapke and Jenna Lugers. Ligers, I'm sorry. Set, slide, that ball's tipped across. And block attempt at the net, but put away by me and Ecan. It's amazing how these young ladies have such good ball control. That ball was set clear across court with the uh, underhand uh, pass, so that was very nice. Lauren Tiemann will step in. She's a back row player for me and Ecamp, and Lauren will serve. Set. Well, Whirling gets her hands on a lot of balls. Yes, she does. And that ball attempted hit out of the middle by Madison Wendell comes up short. And we're going to get our first time out. That will go to the Coldwater Cavaliers. They trail 8-3. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at St. Henry High School. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com. That's around the middle. That's where we'll set this one. And the hit. Got the play by the libero that time to keep it alive. Etzler again, and that time she put it away. So, John, I've got a, some, an old roster, apparently, because I've had some incorrect numbers. Our libero for St. Henry today is Morgan Bomber. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to Coach Etzler before then. I asked if uh, Spencer, her daughter, was going to do any setting since Nikki was such a setter, and she said, oh. oh, nice shot. It was. The kill put away by Chloe Gells. Spencer was such a great serve receiver that she didn't want to have her setting, so she's hitting and uh, serve receiving. Maya Ontrop will serve this ball. Maya has four aces on the season, 5'10 senior. There's Etzler, and well, we got somebody in the net. The Redskin in the net. Number 14, the Leah Leifeld. You know, one thing about doing these schools, Mark, you know, you see a lot of the same names mm -hmm. year after year. Here's Spencer Etzler to serve. Gels. Tip. And that point will go to Jenna Ligers on the tip. Down to just three now for the lead of St. Henry. St. Henry came in with a double block, and she just there was nobody home then when, after that double block was set up. Spencer Etzler. It's going to be an ace for Spencer. Nine seven. Just a sophomore at five eight. She's got plenty of experience. She plays over an Indiana club ball, and she's been playing on varsity since a freshman year. Gells out of the middle. Gells hits it long. Four-point run for Coldwater makes it a, a single-point lead. And St. Henry, they will take a timeout. Their timeout comes at a 9-8 mark. 
We're going to keep it right here during this timeout because this is season 18 of the Sports Report. Started two Friday nights ago. You can join Patrick Campbell for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. All season long, Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. When that game comes to an end, it's high school football on WTLW. WSN's high school game of the week starts at 10 o'clock. And then both of those, of course, replay on Saturday. Lots of game this weekend. The one I'm interested in, John, Elida and Ottawa Glandorf. That ought to be a dandy. Elida 2-0, and OG 0-2, but you look at uh, what OG has done in the past. Ken Schreiner always figures out a way to defend people, and Mark and Henderson's having a great year for Elida. I'm interested to see how that one plays out. Hope to get home for my game. Friday night in time to see that one. Each team has taken a timeout. St. Henry took that one. Coldwater's on a four-point run with Spencer Etzler serving. I think Coach Rosenbeck just told her kids to settle down and get a better approach at that ball so they can get a little better swing at that one. Serve. Layfeld blocked right back at her. I think that was Madison Wendell got that one to tie it at nine. About some of the injuries for Coldwater. That includes Riley Rissmiller, the 6'5 senior, has some lingering uh, nerve damage in her feet. They hope to have her back by the end of September. So she's going to Dayton on a volleyball basketball scholarship. Gels hits that one. And hit off the tape. Oh, and that's nice. going to end up being a point. Good put away for Ligers. Coldwater's come all the way back to take a one point lead. These St. Henry girls are all over the floor now. Never say die. Spencer Epsler, who served five consec six consecutive points. Good serve there. Set, Gels. That's blocked. And it's blocked out of bounds. I think Coach Etzler's having uh, Spencer Etzler serve to uh, number one just to kind of take her out of her rhythm of the hitter. Whirling sets, here's Gels. And this time we have a Cavalier in the net. So it goes to 10-11 now with St. Henry serving. This is Lydia Whirling, the setter, will serve this ball. Lydia's only a junior, but she sure has a lot of playing time over the last couple of years for the Redskins. Tip. Whirling will set that one. This will be Gels. Ligers, and get it out. Nope. Well, did I miss the call, John? Uh, well, Paul signaled. Yes. Uh, I thought the ball was in there. I don't know whether there was an overrule. Well, our line judge was trying desperately to avoid getting hit. <laughs> Maybe I just missed his call. Coldwater by two, 12-10. And we get a Cavalier in the net again. Madison Wendell. It's one thing the Mac has. They always swing at the ball well and they always block well. So uh, it's early in the season. She'll get that blocking technique down and it'll be better. Gels, 5'10 junior. And she'll get an ace. The tied at 12. That's going to be a second ace in a row. Ooh -wee. I think that ball would have been a little long, but I'd rather play it if it was going to be a little long than just land in and not play it at all. Chloe's on a nice run here. Ligers tips. Here's the, the libero will set that one. Block. That ball's tipped. Yes, got a tip. Yep. Well, 
I think both line judges said it was tipped. I know. I, he didn't get much help. Paul didn't get much help from his partner over there. He should have came up with that tip right away. That was right in front of him. You know, that time, the, the libero, uh, and it will be out of bounds. And we're going to get to Captain Lydia Whirling. We'll talk to the uh, official on the stand. I was going to say, John, is uh, the, the person who normally is there, uh, Libero, Rhea Busher, has 10 assists on the year as the Libero. And, and that's just something we're seeing more and more of in the sport of volleyball. Sometimes the libero, libero is just the backup setter if the, if the regular setter has to take the ball inside. That ball went out of bounds and will go to cold water. Cold water's really battling right now. Ruling sets. That's who has to play that hit. Ligers hits that one. Is it down? Uh, I guess it is. Put away by Snyder. I think Coach Etzler's questioning whether that ball might have been knocked down. Off a blocker, hit by Wendell. Tipped out of the middle by Ontrop. Niekamp hits that one. Man, Niekamp with a kill. It's 15-14, home team. Break that run by Coldwater. Here's our libero. Morgan Bomber to serve. Nice serve. Esther from behind a 10-foot line. Good play by Whirling. And Whirling made a gamble for it and couldn't bring the ball in, and we're tied at 15. A little communication issues. Like I say, it's still early in the season. That'll get worked out. Jenna Liger serves this ball. Wendell shots block. Wendell again. And this time it's a St. Henry Redskin in the net. We had a lot of that early on in this set, John. R2 is getting a workout tonight. <laughs> Some people think that R2 job's just a night off. Oh, yeah. Just, just, just a walk in the park. Sure. Nice. So we got touch. Nope. Now we got a Cavalier in the net. Looks like Lizzie Snyder had gotten a kill, but the net violation takes that away, even though the point still goes to St. Henry as we're tied at 16. And this is Brianna Mangin to serve. Fine. A good run play. Oh, the barrel nice tracked that one down. Here's the libero setting. Etzler. Glenn played that one. Knee camp. Mia Knee camp puts that one away. Her team takes a one point lead. Coldwater played nice defense on that, though. The setter took the ball over on two. She was a front row player. They still kept it right back up. Missed serve. Tied at 17. Madison Wendell. Serve this ball. Nice pass. He can't, but he gets blocked out of bounds, and so Henry gets the point. It's amazing, Mark, when you see that nice pass in there. What good swings they the kids can get.
Lauren Tiemann will serve this ball. 5-5 five, five, sophomore. That's the right of the middle. We're tied at 18. It's a wonderful set. All the St. Henry girls thought that ball was going outside. She just dumped it just a little bit behind her head to the middle and had no blockers in front of her. Canapke will serve this ball. Glenn. Good effort on the play by Ligers, but Glenn gets the kill. Gels, excuse me, it's Chloe Gels, not Glenn. Both teams just keep the pressure on. They just keep serving, bumping, hitting the ball. That's an ace. Good serve. She split both the back row uh, receivers. Ontrop has the third ace. But St. Henry is chalked up in the opening set. There we go. Coach Etzler uh, changed her serve receive pattern. Wendell, but she hit it long. 21 18, St. Henry. Timeout, Coldwater. Redskins on a roll. You're watching high school volleyball on WOSN. We're back at St. Henry High School. The Redskins scored the last three points of this one to take a 21-18 lead. In service will be my Ontrop. Coldwater has taken both of their timeouts. St. Henry has used one, and what we're going to get, we're going to call it out. Line judge didn't see it. Ball came from a call came from our R1. Almost hit him in the feet, and Paul had to make the call. For People don't understand that that is a hard call when it lands right in front of you like that. Yeah. You need a little pers uh, distance, a little perspective. That's where floats the serve. She had a wonderful service time the last time. Let's see what happens this time. Tip, what do we got? I was going to say St. Henry. St. Henry into that. Leah Leifeld. Cavs got it back to one. These kids are so active at the net. That Here comes the tip by Wendell. Layfeld hit that one. And then Ligers pushes it. Here's Gels. And back to attack. I think she got a little uh, anxious and blocked the ball on uh, Coldwater's side of the net. Reaching over. Yeah. Three consecutive points ties it up. Can you explain that call, John, for those who didn't, didn't catch what's happening? The ball has to break the plane of the net for it to be a legally blocked ball. So according to our R1, Paul Offenbacher, the ball didn't quite break the plane of the net. The setter touched it, and then the blocker illegally blocked the ball. Now, if that ball would have been in the plane of the net, which any part of the ball breaking that, then it's anybody's ball. And if that blocker would have touched the ball first and then off of the back row setter, we have a back row attack. Or if... Uh, it, if it would have been third contact, she could have gone up and blocked it. But since it was second contact, she had to... Exactly She right. reached over the net and made an improper play on the ball. Exactly right. She has to give that setter an opportunity to set the ball to her teammates. Well, I guess we shouldn't have expected anything different. We're tied at 21. We played nearly a half hour, and we're still in set one. That's, that's why it's so fun doing these matches. It really is. Mac Volleyball. In fact, the volleyball throughout this area, Mercer County, Shelby County. Here's Spencer Etzler. A great service run the last time, and she's got one going right now. She's got an ace right there. There again, I think uh, Coach Etzler wants to serve uh, Chloe Gills just to kind of disrupt her uh, approaches. Spencer Etzler has two aces, one in each of her service turns, and her team leads by one. Gels, big hit. Gels with a kill, ties it at 22. 
Mia Kanapke tried to play that ball out of the net, and I think the net's just a little loose for her. It kind of dropped instead of bounced out. Here's Lydia Whirling to serve. Ligers hits, back to her, plays it. Esther's going to bump it across. Gels. Oh, good play at the net. Pushed over by Mia Kanapke. Nice Kanapke again. Whirling will set Gels. Ligers. Put it away in the corner. Coldwater must have seen something that uh, St. Henry's bringing their uh, left back up just a little tighter, maybe for the dink or something, but that back, uh, right back corner has been uh, open for Coldwater all night long. One point Cavalier lead as Madison Wendell serves. Ace. Their point away from taking the opening set. They've battled all the way back. Coach Mike Gessler, given the serving zone, he'd like Wendell to hit it to. Gell's out of the middle, goes off a blocker, and it falls in. I've got uh, Mr. Offenbacher right in my sign at light of sight, John. Did that go off the tape, or was there a blocker on that one? I think that went off the tape. Off the tape. It's okay. Here's Gell's. Set. Gels from the back row just pushes it over. Point. Chalk it up to Lizzie Snyder. We're tied at 24. You wouldn't expect anything else. No. Overtime on the first, it's uh, the first set. set. Yeah. Chuck it up to Chloe Gells. She's got three of those in this set. She had ten coming into the match this evening. Her team's a point away from taking the first set. Wendell. Madison Wendell knocks it at 25. But set, got a little, just a little bit more outside. And instead of going cross court, she took it down the line that time. Here's Mia Kanapke, the setter for Cole Water. Four contacts. It was, didn't get over the net. One point Cavalier lead. That's and a tough call for the R1. Kanapke serves again. Coldwater with a chance to win the set. Ligers hangs it into the libero. Bomber. Wendell tips. Libero makes another good play. And we're going to get illegal contact. Yes, we are. Coldwater takes the opening set. 27-25. Well, John, we got three, maybe four more of these to go. There you go. <laughs> We're back after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Coldwater takes the opening set in this first night of Midwest Athletic Conference Volleyball. Take that 27-25. They did so by scoring the last three points of the game. They trailed 25-24 and came back and won the last three points. And John, other than that run that Coldwater had where they scored one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points in a row, eight points in a row, other than that, it was very well played, very closely contested. We'll see if uh, Coach Rosenbeck does anything to uh, get uh, Chloe Gills into a different position in the serve receive that time. Mia right. Kanapke will serve. She has eight aces on the season from her setter position. 
That's who has to play that hit. And Wendell has to bump it across. Whirling saved that one. And, and that was Gill. This will be Chloe Gell's to serve. You know, Spencer Estler was in just perfect position for that, but you know, you sometimes you just that's the way it goes. You just the shot went long by Kanapke. So, so Henry takes the first two points of set number two. Trying to get the Cavaliers out of system here, and that's why they're not getting good swings at the ball right now. Kanapke sets Wendell. Madison Wendell shows you why she had 55 kills coming into tonight's action. <laughs> oh, she took a good cut at that ball. There again, being in system makes all the difference in the world. Liger serves. The libero bomber. And then ball's put away by Mia Niekamp. It's amazing these Liberos can now uh, set the ball underhanded over their head and still make it where they can get a good swing at the ball. This is Palmer to serve this one. It's just a freshman at 5'8". Three, two, St. Henry after the missed serve. Madison Wendell will serve this ball. She had an ace in the opening set. Just hate to give away those free points if you're the coach here. Nice ball. quick set that time. On drop. Esther tips that one, but it comes right back at her by Lizzie Snyder. That ball was right on the line that time. Good call by the line judge. Sometimes that's a hard call for the R1 because it's right underneath his feet. You need a lot of help from that LJ1. Brandon Manjin will serve this ball. Off the blocker. That point goes to Kira Napke. Kira Napke. 4-3. Both the Kanapke girls are freshmen now, so uh, Coach Etzler has uh, uh, them for another three years, so that's a nice sign. Ah, chalk that one up. Service point, tied at four. Kanapke with that one. You know the interesting thing about freshmen in this league? They don't play like freshmen. No, not at all. Not at all. Back when I was a coach, the best thing about a freshman was they'd be a sophomore <laughs> next year. But not anymore. Nikam puts that one long. Three consecutive points for the Cavaliers have put them up one. Etzler sets her teammate. And then puts it away. That was really well done, John. I like that when... Uh, she could have went up and hit that on one, but she decided to just get it and the setter give it right back to her for a better swing. So. And Mia Niekamp put the ball in a great spot for her to put it away, too. Four consecutive points, Coldwater. There's going to be an ace. Five consecutive points. Kanapke with an ace. Pass. Knee camp. Wendell tipped it to the right spot. Coldwater has doubled up St. Henry in the second set, 8 4. Timeout. St. Henry, you're watching high school volleyball on WOSN. Mark Labor Day on your calendar, the second annual LifeWise 5K presented by the Tom Wall family of dealerships. The race begins at Sunnydale House where LifeWise Elida begins its second year. We have more to celebrate as the launch of academies in Allen East and Spenceville take place in September. To sign up, Google Elida LifeWise 5K and follow the link to runsignup.com. 
That's another ace. Napke uh, on a roll here. St. Henry serve received, letting them down just a little bit. They're going to change it. Six consecutive points on service. Make it seven. Now she could legally play that ball because it was in the plane of the net. Yes. Go up with two hands and shove it straight down. Kanapke again. There's a good pass. That was, and you can see how that ended up as me and Ecamp put that one away to break the string. I think the Redskins might have been out of rotation here uh, one time or two, and uh, now they got it switched back. To serve, Lauren Teeman. She rolls one across the net and gets an ace. Lauren Teeman's first ace today. We're all in a hurry to get out to our position to hit the ball, and we forget when it hits the net. That's our ball, too. And oh, go, baby. Back oh. to that. Good hustle by number 10, Jenna Lugers. Lauren Teeman had seven aces before today. She's got nine now. Lady in the front row never spilled her Gatorade. She just sat there and watched the ball come. That's a talent. And that, yeah. Almost another one. Here's Etzler. Etzler again. That's blocked. Pushed to the corner by Knapke. And just pushed out of bounds. Can't fall asleep on any of these setters. They'll get the ball into the back row, just dump it between the rows. Spencer Etzler with her team leading by four. Gels. Hit it wide. Going for that back corner. That was a nice shot. She just pulled it just a little bit wide. 5'10", junior is Chloe Gels. Hit 54 kills before today in their first four matches. Yes, sir. Mark, it's amazing how these coaches can move their uh, hitters all the way around. Chloe Gels was receiving serve in the middle of the floor playing left front. Totally legal the way they were lined up. Maya Ontrop serves this ball. And ace for Maya. Her second today. Back to your point there, your R1 better know what he's doing. <laughs> the way they move people around, making yeah. sure that those are legal alignments. That's why Paul Offenbacher's done a lot of yeah. state tournament games. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Lead stays at four for Coldwater, 13-9. Rachel Snorrier played that one very nice that time. She got her right foot back on the back line there and uh, watched it sail out. Yells just tips at that time through two blockers. Kind of nicely see those two blockers come into the middle a little bit. She wipes it off their hand out of bounds, but it's off the tip. So nice shot by uh, Chloe Gills. Lydia Whirling will serve this. Lydia has eight aces this season. Nice play by the center that time, Kanapke, but kill out of the middle, Gels. I thought Kanapke put that in a great spot, and St. Henry just made a play on the ball and got the kill. Yeah. Morgan Bomber come up there and uh, got on the floor and got the ball back up and for a nice set and put away for a kill. Here's Whirling again. And her serve goes long. Now, John? Chris Luthold tells me there are seven times where you're not supposed to miss a serve. And I told him I'm going to count every single time he says that this year because I think there's about 30. 
You know, I always wondered, there's a 30 by 30 box, <laughs> and I think you and I could hit that most of the time, but after you get the competition juices flowing, I can see where these girls come from here. Nice. Set, Wendell, oh, nice play. Keep it alive, St. Henry Whirling got it across. Here's Ligers again. And that time she scores a point in the middle of the defense. The thing with that is coaches like that high risk, high reward type thing. And if they're, they're willing to take a bad serve once in a while to, to get the ball where you want it to in service. Yes, sir. Pushed across by the setter, Kanapke. Bomber set that one as from the libero position. From the back row, Etzler. Nice job. Team him, and then Gell. I think a lot of coaches like to run that back row attack off the D slide of over in the right back, but Edler's such a good defensive player that they keep her at the left back here. So Coldwater runs it out of that part. Wendell goes through the blocker attempt by Lizzie Snyder and gets a point. It's like Coldwater's been up three or four points this entire set. After a big run by the service of Kanapke when they scored the first day. Uh, scored eight points, seven of them off her service. Knee camp. And going to get a legal contact. Yep. Yeah, the setter made it a nice play just getting to the ball, but she would had her body out of position a little bit. Didn't allow her to contact that ball legally. We like her serves. Back set. And kill off a blocker by Lizzie Snyder. This should be the libero Mar Morgan Bomber to serve. And a little moisture on the floor. Can't imagine anybody's perspiring tonight, John, as heated <laughs> as this activity is. Uh, next best thing to a timeout. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Serves to a counterpoint, Troyer. That's the rolls it over. Knee camp. Wow. Man, and Ecamp had 20 kills in their first four matches that the Sandra Redskins have played this year. She put that one away emphatically. Wendell. Palmer had to play that one. Gellis from the back row and missed. laughing, shaking her head. She knew she should have had that ball at least in inbounds. Don't you like that? You're in competition. It's heated. You know, you make a mistake. Okay, I'll get it the next time. I know. Wendell. Short serve. You know, Mark, talking about that same point, a coach once told me, these rallies are only between 12 and 15 seconds apiece. He says, you just can't carry that to the next one or you'll make the same mistake again. Brandon Mangin will serve this ball. Liger sets. That's out of the middle, but gets a block back at her. Pushed across by Schroyer. And out. Need camp hits it long. 19-15. This is Kanapke. Here had a really nice first service run. Scored several points, but not this time. You jinked her, Mark. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, and Coldwater's going to take a timeout. 
It's 1916 Cavs watching high school volleyball on WOSN. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, more scores than WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. John, I do football almost every Friday night, and as soon as halftime hits, everybody's phone is on the WSN app trying to look at all the scores around. Everybody's interested. Everybody's you keep interested. those league games. Yeah. Updated. Coldwater took that timeout. They were still ahead by three. As Teeman will serve. That's there again. Tip. Point. Started off with a wonderful pass to the setter. All starts with that, doesn't it? You get that first pass. Here's Etzler's serve. Team leads by four here in set number two. Rolling pushed it over. Ligers rolling across the top of the net. Four hits. Maya Ontrop will serve. Ligers hits that one. Off the, hit the antenna, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Waiting for the call. I thought that's what happened. Good call by our right side official, but we should have the left line judge make that because Paul's looking that way as the ball goes that way, but we got the call right. On top serves. Ooh. Wendell hits it off. A Lauren Teeman for a point. Madison Wendell. Ace falls between people. Oh. I think Coach Rizenbeck wants to talk about that just a little bit. I would think that's true. That's Wendell's second ace. Her team leads by four as we're here in set number two. You've got an interesting volleyball match that you're going to telecast on Saturday. The Avalon Mendor Titans go to Marion Local. Uh. You know, it doesn't matter uh, when they changed coaches. The, the tradition just kept right on rolling. The players just loved to play at a young age. And, uh, you know, when they play that young, they get more touches on the ball. Especially what you like this time of year. That will air Sunday night on WOSN. What you like is coaches who challenge their team early in the season. Let's find out how good we are. Yeah, it's... You know, Ottawa Glendorf needs to play uh, teams like the MAC. You know, we don't, we were, Northwest Ohio is basically a Division Four type um, area. So uh, Ottawa Glendorf, I think, was Division Two. So when they go to Lexington, usually for their uh, regional tournament, sometimes they run into bigger schools than they are. Here's Wendell to serve. Her team is three points away from taking set two. Gell's gonna tip it across. Ligers hits it. Is it good? Touch. Five-point lead, Cold Water. I think our line judges have done a really good job tonight. Wendell again. Gell's out of the middle, but she hit it into the net. And here is Coldwater. They are one point away from taking the second set tonight. Chloe Gill's just a little late getting to that uh, ball and hit it a little low right into the net. Wendell with an ace to wrap it up. 
set number two also goes to the Coldwater Cavaliers. They took the opening set 27-25. This one is 25-18. Set three coming up after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Today's match, Coldwater takes the first two sets, 27-25 and 25-18. Mark Shine and John Dornick here. John, kind of interested to see how St. Henry comes out and plays early in set three. I expect them to as competitive as uh, the coaches are, as competitive as the girls are that we're going to see St. Henry come out and play a good match. Whether that's enough or not, I don't know, but... Coldwater in that last set had runs of eight and five points to kind of put things away. Eight or the early in the set, five late. I saw as I was looking over at Coldwater's huddle, uh, assistant coach Mike Etzler was talking to uh, one of his players, Spencer Etzler. So that's kind of a special thing, you know. I coached my daughter, and uh, both Nikki and uh, Mike are coaching their daughter. Sometimes that can be a great thing. Sometimes it can turn into disaster. It looks like it's turned into a pretty good thing here. Here's Chloe Gells to serve. She has three aces today. Wendell pushes it inside the antenna. Good call. And a tip in the middle of the floor. That point went to... Is that Follenkamp, I think? Ellie Follenkamp, I think, got the point. There were a lot of bodies in my way. That's what we always call the campfire play. You know, the ball's tipped over and it goes right in between a lot of girls, just like the campfire. Wendell, tie to one. Comes right back at you. Comes Mia Kanapke, setter to serve. 143 assists for a freshman in their opening six matches. We can't hit that one. Should be Ligers with a tip. Whirling gets it. And what do we got? We got a red skin in the net. Fives in the net. Ellie Fullen camp. Sophomore middle hitter, six-footer. Here's Mia Kanapke to serve again. Here's Fullen Camp. Liger's off the blocker, and they're going to get a point out of it. It's amazing. Ellie Fullen Camp moved out, cut outside, got her hands on the ball, made a nice block at it, but it hit the floor. That's blocked. Wendell was there. Nick Liger's two. Between the two of them, they sent it back, and it's going to be a four consecutive points for Coldwater. It's amazing, Mark, the footwork that goes into those double blocks to get out there and seal everything off. Camp rolls it over. Etzler can't quite get to it. Point for St. Henry. Nice effort by Spencer Etzler. Four two Coldwater on our Charles River scoreboard. Five two. Jenna Ligers will serve this ball. Good nice. scramble, good scramble. Etzler just bumps it over. Good job just keeping it alive. And there's a put away. That was phone camp. No, it was not. My mistake. That was me and knee camp. Brianna Mangan coming back in the game. Brianna plays back row. Lizzie Snyder plays front row. Etzler 
Good save by the libero, Bomber. And that's going to be a point, St. Henry. The janitor might not have to clean the floor tonight as often as these girls have been down. One of the cold water assistant coaches is going to take care of some perspiration. Or as my grandmother would say, ladies do not perspire, they glow. <laughs> we remember all those old sayings that our uh, grandmothers used to have. It's one of the problems in the world. Grandmothers and grandfathers don't, don't influence enough uh, uh, in wisdom, impart enough wisdom to... Here we go. That's a whole other topic. We that is a whole on. other topic, it is. Wendell gets a kill. Nice set and a very good swing on the right side there that time. Looks like Madison Wendell got a good cut on that. Foot, footwork's even more important on the right side, isn't it? Because you're oh. twisting your body around a little bit to get to the ball. That's why a lot of coaches like to have lefties out on mm -hmm. that side. There's a kill. That one goes to Ontrop as she clobbered it through two blockers. Well, and I can tell you, football practice for St. Henry is over because the football team is now up behind us. There we go. Got to love the football team. Oh, uh, yeah. And supporting their ladies here, much like they would do on Friday night for them. We got Coldwater out of alignment. Coach Esther wants to find out who is the person who's at fault. Tied at six. Looks like Spencer Etzler was in front of, I'll get that number in front of Jenna Lugers. Etzler tips, gets a point. Great placement of the ball by Spencer. We talked about that earlier, Mark, about how these coaches move these kids around to get the best receivers in, in line. Gels. Etzler. And I think she hit it into the tape that time. Leads to four contacts. We're tied at seven. My Ontrop will serve this ball. She has four aces on the season and added two more tonight. Pushed over that time by Kanapke. Gels out of the middle and left it short. That was a nice job just beating the ball into the net and it came out of the net right to her teammate and she got it over. Coldwater is off until next Tuesday when they go to Wapak. Their next conference match is with New Knoxville at home. And that is a week from tonight on the 8th of September. Gels block. Bowling camp out of the middle. Nope, missed it. St. Henry has their big invitational here on Saturday. Their next conference match is a week from tonight at Marion Local. Block, the block out of bounds. Point goes to St. Henry. These girls are hitting the ball so hard that the block goes clear out across the floor there. Lydia Weirling. Junior Same. setter. Rogers rolls it over. This will be set by Bomber. And then Lizzie Snyder hit it into the net. And to get a four count. Coldwater scored four points the first time they served. Nobody has scored more than two in a row since then. Gels. Nice dig by Etzler. Flaggers gets it blocked out of bounds. But Fulham Camp was up there. So was Snyder. 
Three-point calf lead. Mark, that's one reason I like they went to rally scoring here with that <laughs> side out scoring. You could be here all night. <laughs> and we got a rotation Ooh, violation uh, on uh, the Redskins. Went here. the other way this time. Coach Rosenbeck's moving her people around to get them legal. Okay, it looks like the back row is the setter, Libro, and... Whirling sets, Gels. That was played by Wendell. Snyder played it. Bomber sets, Gels. Help. And she missed it long. Played a ball that might have been out, but as you said earlier, you got to go get them. You can't just let them fall. St. Henry timeout. They trail by five in set three. You're watching high school volleyball on WOSN. We're back here at Coldwater. Four consecutive points for Coldwater against St. Henry. And they have taken a five-point lead, hence the first time out that went was called by Trisha Rosenbeck. Gels tips out of the middle. Did she hit the point? Oh, she missed it. When it went off her hand, John, I thought that was perfectly placed. It was just a little wide. Yeah, St. Henry's trying to move her around, keeping her in the middle sometimes and on the outside sometimes. So after scoring four points on service, we get a missed serve that went long. Breaks that run of five consecutive points. Ellie Fullenkamp back in for, uh, I think it's uh, Lauren Tiemann. Gell serves. Ace. Junior coming up big. Fourth ace tonight, 11th on the season. He's going to step up and make the big pass here. Wendell. We had illegal contact, didn't we? Yeah, looked like it coming out of her hand. Not many ball handling errors tonight, John. No, for as big a match as this is. Not at all. These are two well-coached programs. Gell floats this serve over. Kanapke sets in the middle. And Ligers puts it away. A little different run that time. Yes, it was. Here's Mia Kanapke to serve. Play. Another good play in the back row. Wendell got that one. Knee camp. Ligers just push it to the corner. What a great spot to put the ball in. That's an intelligent volleyball player right there. You see that left front opening and everybody coming to block and just put the open spot on the floor. Knapke serves again. Knee camp. Mia Niekamp comes through for her team. Cuts the lead to four. Morgan Bomber, the libero, will serve. Ball gets into the, that in the net outside the antenna. Is that what that was, Sean? Yes, it was. The, light, the line judge was all over it. He just didn't get his flag up high enough. Bomber serves again. St. Henry needs a run. Wendell. Missed the sideline. Coldwater's getting good swings. They're just not putting the ball away. St. Henry's playing awful good defense, though, so that is part of the reason. Palmer had to play that one. Really, it's going to set Gels. Ligers hits this one. This will be knee camp off a blocker. Ligers just tips it this time. Set by the libero bomber. Kill. And that's legal, John, because she used two hand underhand motion inside the 10 foot line. Timeout, Coldwater. 
They still lead by one. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Coldwater sees the St. Henry, Henry Redskins on a four-point run. They take a timeout. They still lead by one. A couple times coach has done that. They're still ahead. Take the timeout before you get behind. I think that's a good idea sometimes. Yes, it is. That's sometimes you wait, coaches. you wait too long to call that timeout. And that kill goes to Ligers. Nice shot out of the back row. Puts her team back up to. And with that, Jenna gets to serve. 5'9", senior. And what a play. What a play. How what about play. that? They scramble. Wendell just tips. Palmer gets to that one. And then they mishandle the ball in the front row. How about that play, though? Never give up. Never give up. Whirling is the one that got it across, but two of her teammates made great plays to get, get, get her to that particular point. That was a tough place to get the ball back in between the antennas. Knee camp. Had some heat on that ball, Mark. Dennis Wendell may be out to the athletic director here. <laughs> smoothing the floor out, getting the dents out of it after some of these hits. Coldwater's won the MAC twice. St. Henry has won it 29 times. There's a kill. It's harder to win this league than it is to win the state tournament. Yeah. In every sport. I was going to say that one year there was two teams out of this league won state championships. Last year, New Knoxville wins the state championship over this St. Henry team. Tip. And Wendell got a set higher than she was anticipating. A little miscommunication there. Two-point lead for the Coldwater Cavaliers as Lauren Tiemann goes back to serve. She's got a couple of aces today. The team could use a couple right now. Wendell pushes it to the back row. Whirling dumps it across. Ah, blocked at the net by Maya Ontrop. That was a good read of that play. She knew they were out of system, and she just followed the ball and lined herself up. Teaming again. Let's see if Coldwater's got an answer here. Etzler. Yes, they do. She's been a little bit quiet in this set, at least with her net play. She's been played well in the back row, but then she put that one away. Her team leads by two. Knapke to serve. That kill chalked up for St. Henry. Staying alive, they trail by one. Bontrop will serve this ball. That was all legal for the Libero to do, uh, attack the ball because the ball was partially below the height of the net. That's their two-hand push. Gels. Out. 21-19. As Spencer Etzler goes back to serve. They need to make a good pass right here. Palmer has to hit it across the libero. Tip. Ligers pushes to the corner. Did she get it in again? She did. Get it in again. 
That must be three or four times tonight she shot that ball right down the net. Timeout, St. Henry. They trail by three. And we are in set number three. That was a great job uh, by Spencer Estor to serve the ball to uh, Chloe Gills. They've done that all night. That must have been a real part of the uh, game plan tonight for Coldwater going in. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, and commitment to others, as well as excellence on the football field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV backslash John Reed. Well, we'll see if St. Henry, who trails by three in set three, can make one run here and get to get us to set four. We're playing an hour and 20 minutes plus, and we're in set three. I'm sure Coach Rosenbeck talking, don't look at the scoreboard, just play this next play one at a time. St. Henry has taken two of their, uh, their allotted two timeouts. Coldwater has used to just one as Spencer Etzler will serve. Good serve. Kept alive. It's going to be put over by Mangin. And then Ligers puts it away. Coldwater, two points away for straight set victory in the opening night of MAC play. Coldwater's running a pretty decent offense tonight. I mean, they're getting the ball outside and the cross court shot has been there all night. Gells out of the middle. She hit it off a Coldwater Cavalier. That was a great answer there. Lydia Whirling will serve this ball. Eight aces for her on the season. Ligers tips at that time. Here's Whirling set. Gells again. Look out. Oh, boy. They brought Gills uh, inside just a little more, even though she was playing left outside, they brought her inside there. She picked up the tip by cold water and then hit the ball right out of the middle, just where she belonged. Whirling to serve again. And here is Coldwater. They are one point away from straight sack victory. Madison Wendell, the 5'11 junior, gets the opportunity to serve. She's got a pair of aces this evening. Set, Gell's in the middle, and she hit it along. And Coldwater will take straight sack victory this evening over the St. Henry Redskins. They will do so 27-25, 25-18, and 25-21. Well, John, your, your thoughts here on opening night of MAC action. Wow, it was very good, very good volleyball. I think the coaches both have a lot of things they can work on. Uh, you know, it's early in the season, so like you say, you test yourself every night in the MAC. So now, St. Henry's going to come right back with their tournament and test themselves again this weekend. So they've got a day to get ready. I'm sure they will be. Well, there's eight more of these Thursday nights in MAC play, too. This this is the opening good good win, but it's not certainly not put anybody out of reach for a championship nor locked one up. Thank you for your commentary tonight, John. Our scoreboard tonight has been sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. Our camera people tonight are Lexi Waddle and Caitlin Hendrickson. Nick Freddy will edit this back at the station. And we want to thank the athletic director here, Mr. Dennis Wendell. We're going to try to get an interview with the Coldwater coach. If we can, we'll back right after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back here at St. Henry with the winning coach from Coldwater, Nick Yesler. Coach, the first set really close, but then your team really picked it up in sets two and three. Yeah, I think they did a great job controlling the momentum, putting pressure on the service line, so it was fun to be a part of tonight. You seem to be very well balanced in the front row. you got a lot of different girls who have made a lot of different plays for you in the front row. Yeah, I, I think that um, 
you know, we're we're playing without one of our six rotation players, and I think the girls have just really worked to train to figure out what works for us right now, and they're all buying into whatever they need to do. They're going to do it for the team, um, and I think that our setter, um, Mia Kanapke, really stepped it up tonight to run our offense along with Jenna, but Mia, like being a freshman coming into this, she really stepped up tonight, so we're super proud of her. Well, your own tournament back at Coldwater almost two weeks ago now, you lost your first two, and since that time, you're undefeated. What have you learned about your team in the last two weeks? Well, I just think it's just all about, like, you know, taking some underclassmen and putting them in the fire and then training them to deal with their emotions and runs of the game. And, and I just think that that's a big jump from eighth grade to a varsity mat game. So just being a part of that and then having an injury happen so suddenly, like, we just weren't very composed and I think that we're growing and maturing, so I'm, I'm excited. The coaching staff is excited to see this tonight. Well, Coach, this is the first of nine matches in this conference. you, you got eight more nights of doing this, and your league is very, very good. Uh, from, I mean, all of the teams are so good this year, so you have to be on your game every night. I mean, you just celebrate this moment, and then you go home and... You think about who you're playing next and you prepare for that and you grind and you try to get better. But really, it's it's a long haul. So it, it just takes a lot out of the girls and they just become so tough. But that's what's great about being a part of the MAC is, you know, life isn't going to be easy and it's going to have bumps in it and you have to, like, fight and grind for it. So hopefully this is going to make them better for life, too. So Coach Nick, got Nick Yesler from the Coldwater Cavaliers. Her team takes a three-set victory tonight over St. Henry. You've been watching high school volleyball on WOSN.